On Larry King now, turtle no more, Jerry Ferrara. I tend to operate from a, a safety fear perspective. You know, it's weird, I'm actually realizing how successful it was now. I never enjoyed it when it was happening. Is it gonna be a movie? There is gonna be a movie. We're getting the band back together. There's definitely a throwback to the earlier seasons of the show. Plus, are you ready to be Mark Wahlberg? Take like a mini Mark Wahlberg, because <laughs> I don't know if you could be Mark Wahlberg. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome back to Larry King Now, another edition with Jerry Ferrara. You know him from his role as Turtle on the HBO hit series Entourage. And now he's making the jump to the big screen. He recently acted alongside De Niro, Douglas Freeman, and Klein in Las Vegas. And now he stars with Mark Wahlberg and Taylor Kitsch in Lone Survivor. That film about a failed Navy SEAL team mission opens in theaters January 10th. Maybe most important of all, he's from Brooklyn. <laughs> Where? Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Me too. Interesting. What school? New York High School. Lafayette. Uh, Lafayette. Les. Ooh, John Koufax. Franco went to John Koufax. Franco as well. Franco. Koufax is the. Vic Damone. The Aspermonte brothers. <laughs> you went to Utrecht. I went to Utrecht. That yeah. was our big our rivals. Yeah, the rivalry's not quite there anymore. It became no. Lincoln Utrecht Lincoln, after a while, yeah. 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 Utrecht's song was 10,000 boys, 10,000 girls. That's right. I remember that. That's what right. street did you live on? I lived on 13th Avenue and 78th Street. Bay Parkway and 83rd. So you must know Spumoni Gardens then. Piece of course. Of uh, well, well, hey. Best piece in Lowe's the world. Lowe's Oriental. Yeah. Hey, so you're a Yankee fan. I am a Yankee fan, yes. But why not? I, Brooklyn guys became Met fans. Well, here's what I wanted to ask you, because you know what? You're a Dodger fan, obviously, yeah. and you go back to Brooklyn Dodgers, I was right? At Robinson's first game, interview Jackie. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I've been around. You know, I'm, I'm a Knicks fan, and now that the Nets are in Brooklyn, a lot of my friends have jumped ship to being Net fans. I, I will always be a Knicks fan. Like, if the Knicks moved to L.A., I'd be an L.A. Knicks fan. Yeah, right. It's not I, so much about where I'm from, but now it's just I'm in love with that franchise. Like, you followed the Dodgers here. Why did you choose here. the Yankees? You know, when I grew up, the Yankees were awful in the 80s. Like, I suffered through the Dave Winfield. All we really had was Don Mattingly. That was it. I mean, I could go down that list of Yankees in the 80s, and they were terrible. So, oh. uh, when I started feeling the, the success in the 90s, everyone thought I was a front runner. But, uh... I just, my mom was a Yankee fan, and uh, I just grew up loving Don Mattingly. Well, we'll talk about Lone Survivor in a minute. How about Las Vegas? That unusual role you got there of the kind of flunky. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of play this character who uh, is kind of like frat boy, and his job is to antagonize these, the Mount Rushmore of acting, as I like to call them, and De Niro and Douglas. And uh, it, it's kind of hard to be obnoxious to guys that you've idolized your, your whole life growing up. What was it like for you? You know, I, I really, a goal of mine was to not get fired. This was such a great job. I'm like, like just, just make sure you really don't get fired from this job because these are the guys you respect. And uh, you would think that there was some kind of, like, hierarchy, these legends. Like, they brought me right over and instantly just made me feel like yeah. I was one of them. And uh, my, I just sat back and observed. It was an observation for me. And uh, I, I learned a lot from just watching these guys do it. I had a great time talking with them. And, of course, they're all in a, each a major star. Yeah. Who was the quietest? Uh, De Niro was yeah. the quietest, I would say. Highest maintenance. Uh, there really wasn't any of that. I'm not even taking a high road here. They're really, those, uh, Morgan Ooh. Freeman was working with 102 Fever at one point. They were gonna, like, shut down for the day. He said, no, let's keep, let's keep going. And he, he was sick as a dog and worked the whole day. Who was the funniest? They're all pretty funny. Kevin Klein is, uh, is, uh -huh. is just razor sharp with comedy. Did they offer advice to you or? You know, uh, there was one point where I was doing a scene with Morgan Freeman and uh, he basically set, gives me advice about how to pick up a woman and sends me over there and I, we did a few takes and then he just simply offered up, on this one, why don't you try this or try that and do it this way and I absolutely took his note, and sure enough, I did it, and something I never would have thought of, and that's the exact take that's in the movie. Tell me about Lone Survivor. It's a true story, right? Or Lone Survivor is a, a true story based on a book that uh, Marcus Luttrell wrote, who was the, the Lone Survivor, Peter Berg directing. And he wrote it for you, this part? Is that true? It, 
it's, no, he did not write it for me, but, you know, I've done, I've, I've worked with Pete before, and, um, you know, he, he kind of offered me this role, and uh, at the time, I was just hoping I could do it, and it was a, he's like, it's a small role, but it's a good role, and I want you to do it, and, you know, sure enough, when I, when I kind of got there, there really was no small role in that movie, because uh, it just, it's such a important film. These guys are basically superheroes. You, 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 you don't play a, a, a Navy SEAL, right? I play a Marine um, who basically, you know, is running the communications for the SEALs while they're on this mission, which, is ha which was the problem with the mission, was the communications and the satellite was a problem. Like, the communications kept going in and out. Where did you shoot? Uh, that was shot um, in New Mexico, which uh, I was actually doing Las Vegas at the same time, so I was leaving this lighthearted, funny set with my heroes in Vegas where we're partying and then getting to this really, then flying to New Mexico to this really intense, real life story about these heroes. It, it, it was like, okay, I, I turned off all the funny stuff and got serious. And you I work in both at the same time? Yeah, yeah. And then going back to Vegas and was kind of now in an intense mode and having John Turtle tell the director, be like, okay, lighten up, Jerry. It was uh, a really weird a kind strange, of parallel. Yeah. Strange parallel for me. How's it like working with Wahlberg? Ah, uh, he's just, he's the best. I go back with Mark now to the early Entourage days. You know, I was 23 when I, when I got Entourage. I'm 34 now, and uh, Mark's always been really good to me. And the one thing, not the one thing, but the thing that always sticks out is there's no harder working guy in, uh, in show business. And he doesn't have to work that hard if he didn't want to, but he does. The guy just doesn't, doesn't stop. He really, I, I look up to Mark. Came a long way, didn't he? A long way, and if you look back on it now, his career spawns so many different chapters. That's kind of why I look up to him. He's underwear model mm -hmm. to Academy Award nominated actor. You know, it's just insane his transitions. Is that going to be a hit? Do you think Lone Absolutely. Survivor? Lone Survivor, I think it'll it'll be a hit, but also I think it will really just you know hit home and make people stop and really see what kind of like i said i use the word like superhero like these guys are real life superheroes when we come back jerry will discuss the role that made him famous stay with us we're back with jerry ferrara he'll star with uh, mark Wahlberg in lone survivor it opens in january tell me about entourage and turtle how did that come about uh you know pretty uh standard story 23 years old, working in many different restaurants in the San Fernando Valley, auditioning every day, and auditioned for Entourage. And uh, Steve Levinson and Mark Wahlberg had seen an independent film I did, so they were really kind of championing me for the role. And then I uh, auditioned 150 times. And, really? Uh, <laughs> literally, like, paired up with so many different... Ad the search for that show was... The casting was pretty extensive, and... Uh, Got the call, told my mom I'm in a pilot. She kind of was like, what's that mean? I'm like, I don't really know. And uh, we were shooting the pilot a couple of weeks after that. Were you surprised it was a hit? Because it was very in show. I, yes, I was. Only because I tend to operate from a, a safety fear perspective. Like, I wanted it to be a hit, but I never quite... You know, it's weird. I'm actually realizing how successful it was now. I never enjoyed it when it was happening throughout all 96 episodes. I always was hoping people were watching it. Now I could kind of look back on it and I, I see that it, it, it really did well. Now, you were fatter on the show, right? <laughs> yes, I was. I, you could just fat? say it, Larry. I was fat. You were fat. <laughs> I, uh... Did you have to be fat for that role or were you just fat? <laughs> <laughs> you just happened it, to be you know, fat. It, it, I was always a chubby kid, and when I kind of got, when I was 23 and I got it, I was on the chubby side, but, um, and it definitely fit the character, so it wasn't uh, any rush to change, and uh, just over the steady course of great craft service, eight and a half years, uh, <laughs> it's, and never working out, it just slowly became a heavier guy, but it always worked for the character. Um, but yeah, I was walking around at 200. So it didn't hurt to you getting the part that you were fat? Absolutely not. You know, he was a lazy stoner sidekick. Did you, did you uh, lose weight then deliberately after that? Here, it, yes and no. Like, it, it was a luxury of knowing when the show was going to end. Like, we knew, okay, we're ending on this and this date. And we had about a year's notice. So I knew I, I, the first way to kind of change people's perception is physically, visually. Um, but also, uh, I had just turned 30. And I went for, like, the, the Hollywood physical, which all actors have to do just to get cleared to go do a movie. They basically make sure you're not dying. 
<laughs> and I had this doctor who literally didn't try to scare me, but kind of said, you know, you're, you're 30 years old, you're, you know, you're not in any health risk now, but you know what, in 10 years, if you go along this path, it could be a problem. And uh, it just kind of hit home. And that next day, I was like on the phone with a friend of mine who's a nutritionist and just changing wow. every, I mean, I smoked for 15 years, I stopped smoking, everything. What was Doug Allen like? He was supposed to be very difficult to work with. No, nah, I mean, no. look. That was his reputation. Doug is, is, is one of my best friends and, and, you know, had to handle so much throughout the eight years of this show. Like, he, he literally did everything. I mean, I, I've never really felt Doug was ever difficult to me, you know, but I've seen just extreme circumstances where there was no choice but to be kind of, there was just chaos a lot of the time. Is there going to be a movie? There is going to be a movie. We start shooting in the middle of January. Same cast? Same cast. Everybody's, uh, we're getting the band back together. But you won't be fat. <laughs> that, uh, that is not gonna happen. I would make them pay per pound, and it would be a lot per pound. What does it look like, the script? Uh, look, it's, I think it's great, but obviously I have, uh, I have some favoritism there, but it is definitely a throwback to the earlier seasons of the show where it kinda, you know, was these four friends really just trying to help their best friend navigate this crazy situation he's in with movie stardom. So it, uh, it, for the fans, I would say it's a throwback to the earlier, earlier seasons. But it's the same cast? Same no, cast. No major, major star added? No Tom Cruise? Uh, the, no, there is no Tom Cruise, but Entourage has always had their great cameos, and uh, there will be some great cameos, as always, in, uh, in the movie. So now you're a busy, kind of successful, everything's groovy for you. You know, I don't like to say that out loud. Because uh, I'm scared that it's really not true, but uh, it's um, you know it, it really just to me I've seen that you just gotta you just gotta work hard. It has to be a top priority. Because um, are you married? No, single. Got a steady girl. I have a girl. I have a girl. It's yeah. first time I've actually said that out loud right here too. I have a girl. Oh, it's serious. It's. No, just a girl. Just a girl. Just a girl. <laughs> now, this is where what do you mean? So first what is time the, I'm sipping from the cup. What is the big deal of saying it out loud if it's just a girl? You're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something. You know, usually when someone says, I've, I have I've a girl, realized something. We it's kinda, serious. Dating and, like, being single and, like, relationships, it's kind of run like the BCS system for college football. <laughs> like, you take strength to schedule, you lost to this. Is this girl a Brooklyn kind of girl? The, not from Brooklyn, but Brooklyn theory. You know what it's like just to have the Brooklyn vibe. There, are, there is a Brooklyn vibe. There is a Brooklyn vibe. There's Look something about Brooklyn. It's hard to explain this to people who don't know. But when you run into a guy you haven't seen in 15 years mm -hmm. from Utrecht, yeah. the time disappears in a minute and you're home again. Instantly. And uh, he's inviting me to his house for dinner. My mother's going to cook. You should come by. And then yeah, it's just there is something about that place. But you're right. You can't ever really label it one specific thing. And it was thing. Jews and Italians. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. That's right. And you were Italian. Italian, yes. And I was Jewish. Yes. We knew each other well. Absolutely. We well, grew up together, essentially. Going to the YMCA. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, we'll talk sandwiches and sports and about a guy named Sal next. Jerry Ferrari, you'll see him in Lone Survivor. You saw him in Las Vegas, and you'll see him upcoming in Entourage, and you also saw him in Entourage. Now, tell me about this sandwich shop. Fat Sal's. I have a bagel shop, Brooklyn Water Bagel, I, I've, on Beverly Drive. I've been many times. Very I love good the, bagels. the ice cube coffee ice. Oh, the, it's yeah, fantastic. The coffee ice cubes. It's fantastic. Now, what is what is Fat Sal's? Fat Sal's is uh, is a is a sandwich shop that uh, there there is a the Sal of Fat Sal's one of my best friends from he's actually from Staten Island. Uh, years ago, we always talked about opening up a kind of Italian restaurant or an Italian deli. Is he fat? Uh, Yes, but different. Not fat like I was fat. He's like offensive lineman fat. Like there's a lot of muscle. Muscular. Fat. Yeah, he's just. Where there. is the shop? Uh, the first one opened up in Westwood, right by UCLA. Um, we now are. We just closed on our fourth. Um, there's one in San Diego, and the new one just opened on Fountain and Highland, which has just been off to an amazing. I drive by there every day. You should. You should well, please, by all means. Fountain and Fat Fount Sal's. Fat Sal's on Fountain. What and is Island. the secret of Fat Sal's? Well, here it, it's it evolved from you know this kind of Italian deli idea to then these fat sandwiches, which were very very popular on the East Coast, where literally it's anything you could think of, like on a sandwich. Like these sandwiches have French fries and. 
and mozzarella sticks and all like Boar's Head cold cuts and every sandwich is named after a person. Like the Fat Jerry is the number one seller. I think they tell me that maybe though, just to keep me happy, I'm not quite so sure. So wait a minute, on one sandwich will be pastrami and french fries uh -huh. on oh, the yeah. sandwich? Easily, absolutely, yes. This is not a calorie counting sandwich. No, no. this is not literally for the faint of heart. Um, we will at some point start a skinny side of the menu. Uh, we'll have the sensitive Jerry, which will be some kind of turkey wrap. But uh, yeah, no, this is decadent. This is. All right, if you're in LA, uh, you're going to expand? Uh, we've, yeah, we're actually uh, opening now in Austin, Texas, which is the right. They work real well by college campuses because when you're 17, 18 years old, you can't eat that five times a week. We'll go right by there today. I'll go, right, I'll go buy Fat Sal's. I love it, Larry. Okay, let's talk a little sports. What did you make of Cano and that deal? You know, I, I hate seeing a homegrown Yankee go like that. I mean, I, I, Robinson Cano is a, is a great player. I'm kind of adverse to give any player at this point. Ten years. Yeah, I, I, you know, seven years is kind of my max. I actually think five years, is, if I was a GM, would be the most I'd be willing to pay someone unless they were 19 years old. What about your Yankees? They're in trouble. <sighs> They're in trouble. Uh, you know, I, I love what Girardi did. I think Girardi arguably did his best coaching job yet with the Yankees this year. The injuries were ridiculous. We got to get younger. And if you look back to those great Yankee teams, it, yes, we still had free agency signings, but the homegrown core, you know, the Jeters, obviously, Bernie Williams, Mariano Rivera, those guys were Yankees from the beginning. We need to kind of redevelop that instead of just signing. I don't see any big prospects in the system, do you? Zero. I mean, again, unless there's something I don't know, um, yeah. and I'm not as up on it as I was 10 years ago, but I don't, I don't see the next Andy Pettit walking through the door, you know, anytime soon. All right, now another thing. You're going to play Arturo Gatti yes. in the upcoming film. Um, yes, Arturo Gatti, who's my favorite fighter of, of all time, you know. He was in those famous fights with Mickey Ward, you know, the trilogy, as they like to call it, which Mark Wahlberg played Mickey Ward in The Fighter, you know, many Oscar nominations. Do you box? Uh, I mean, I, I, on a very small amateur scale, like I am not a good fighter. I don't claim to be a good fighter. Like actually being around a lot of fighters now and seeing what those guys put themselves through, uh, it's, it's like no other sport. And what's the concept of the story? Well, you know, Arturo Gatti kind of was just this polarizing figure in, in boxing. You know, he was, the, he was the real life Rocky in a way where he could lose 10 straight rounds get knocked down 15 times, but he had that home run left hook that could win him a f And a lot of times in the 10th round, he'd land that left hook and win. He, he, he tragically uh, passed away at a very, very young age. And, um, you know, it's weird, because they made the Mickey Ward movie, and he kind of became famous because of Arturo Gatti, and Mickey Ward made Arturo Gatti famous. So I think now it's kind of Arturo's turn to get his, his story told. And of course, boxing movies done right can make it. Done right. That's the key to the key to the sentence there. Done right can absolutely make it because it's it's a it's a crazy world that they it's a crazy life they live. It's it's like no other sport really. I mean, you could look at tennis or any other sport where it's just you, in the you, you know it's a one person sport. But the guy on the other side is trying to kill you. <laughs> you know, it's a different thing. Well, this will make you a leading man. You're the star, right? I I, I would be the star. Uh, I I I don't know. You know, I I guess I don't. Are you ready? I'll leave that the, up to you to decide. Are you ready for superstardom? You know what? Here's what I'll say, Larry. Uh, yes, Jerry. <laughs> three years ago, no. I'm not even saying superstardom. In terms of, like, actually being, like, a leading man, I, I did my first lead role this summer in an independent film back in New York, which shot in New York, and it's, it was every scene, every moment of the movie is hinged on... The performance and you know what I wouldn't have been able to physically do that you know I, I think I would have probably been hospitalized because of the grueling schedule at some point being in such bad shape but also just a whole new respect of you know you're in every scene you're there every day and even if you're exhausted you got to kind of lead it are you ready to be Mark Wahlberg I'll take like a mini Mark Wahlberg because <laughs> I don't know if you could be Mark Wahlberg Jerry's taking your questions in our final segment plus the answer to the age-old question who was Jerry's first kiss? <laughs> Don't go away. With Jerry Ferrari, you'll see him in Lone Survivor. The film opens January 10th. First, some social media questions. Bumblebee Tuna via tweets. 
Will your commitment to entourage make you unavailable to play point guard for the Knicks? <laughs> you know, I would gladly hang up acting to go play point guard for the Knicks. So if the Knicks call and they want me to play point, I quit acting. At AJDur94 asks for Twitter, did you cry when entourage ended? Yeah, I did. I, I walked away when we had that final shot, and uh, I, I cried, made sure no one saw, but I, uh, I had a little man walk, and was I cried. Was there a cast party? Yeah, I mean, the minute we called cut and it was the final shot, I mean, there was a cake and champagne, and, you know, almost a decade with those people. At D. Monroe wants to know if anyone ever confuses you for the guy who played Rudy in Rudy, <laughs> Sean Astin. Whatever happened to Sean Astin? I, I, I mean, he's, he, he's around. He's Sean Astin's had a great career. Uh, you know what? Yes. And um, I think I, I'm going to go as Rudy for Halloween this, year, this coming year. It's gonna be, I'm going to be Rudy. That was a good movie. Great movie. And I would, that's a role I would love to play. At Jimbo Slice 23 wants to know your favorite episode of Entourage. Favorite episode of Entourage is the Sundance episode. We shot an episode at Sundance early, early on, and it was the first time. We became famous after that for kind of doing episodes outside of L.A., and that was the first trip we took outside of L.A. to go shoot. And finally, Jay Rumba, Bo123, their Instagram. What are your favorite Nike sneakers of all time? Of all time? Ugh. Are you a Nike sneaker fan? I am. I, I would have to go just Jordan 1s. Jordan 1s. It's just. Why do I always see lines at the Nike store? Because, I mean, at and 7 I, just in the morning. These things, I, people go nuts. But how do they know when there's a new sneaker coming? Oh, it's talked about for months before. It's almost like the opening talked of a movie. Talked about where? On the internet? On the internet, uh, you know, sneakerheads. Like, it's talked about like the opening for a movie. Because I'll get up early. Uh -huh. I'm always up early. And I'll drive by Nike, and they don't open till 10. Uh huh. And it's quarter to seven, and they're around the block waiting for a sneaker. Oh, I feel like maybe, like, can I, I feel like you could probably skip that line. Will you maybe take me in there and we go get a pair I of Nikes together? You're famous enough. We can go in anyway. Let's go in together. Let's get you some Nikes. My, my younger son just got a new, there's a new Jordan now. Yeah. Black and white. Yes. Have you seen it? Of course. <laughs> Smart guy. Okay. <laughs> He's wearing it now. Anyway, he said, I got to hide it because my brother will take it. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. I remember those days. <laughs> All right. It's a game of if you only knew. <clears throat> first person you kissed. Christina Volpe. Christina Volpe in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Where uh, was it? It was in her basement. And then uh, when we left, uh, <laughs> God, I'm sorry, Christina. Um, I do remember the next day I thought I was allowed to like then do that again. She may or may not have kicked me in the crotch. That was also the first time I got kicked there. So this girl is the first girl I kissed and the first girl that I got hit. How old were you? Ten. I think. Where was it? At school? Uh, all this happened on my street. I grew up on a street where literally there was about fifteen kids my own age lived on my street. Yeah, and, me too. You know, you just Blocked. you just you hung around. You the woke corner. up. You went outside. Hung around was, the corner. It was a block party right. essentially. So she all, was on the street. You she lived her. up the street a little bit. You yeah, kissed her on the street. Mm -hmm. Whack. <laughs> <laughs> What's the thing that scares you the most? <sighs> the thing that scares me the most: uh, silence. Entourage character you wanted to play other than Turtle. Uh, Billy Walsh. Is there a TV show you're embarrassed to admit that you watch? <clears throat> I nope. have one. Nope, I don't have one. I uh, have one. What's yours? Well, I, I don't turn it on, but if I walk into the room and it's on, mm -hmm. I watch SpongeBob. <laughs> I can't follow that, Larry. It's a great show. <laughs> you know, I, I got caught up with SpongeBob for a month or two. No, it is. Yeah, I know. You were seven. <laughs> <laughs> Characteristic you appreciate most in others? Loyalty. Favorite Yankee team in history? I would have to go with that 96 team. It's the first World Series I ever saw. You're on a desert island. What three things do you have with you? Uh, I have music with me. Uh, I have pasta. <laughs> my, like my mom's pasta. And uh, I don't really need it. I just need two. Things you miss most about Entourage? Camaraderie, the guys, you know. The, you all got along. Uh, they're 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 family. They're my brothers, you know. Like getting up and going to work every day at six in the morning and just seeing my four best friends, you know. It's that's that was the best part. Dream role. 
<clears throat> you know, that's the great part about acting is like you get to you get to do it for a long time if you're lucky and you get to play many like I was the kid that my career changed it was always I wanted to be a fireman one day and then a soldier and so I mean my dream role I, I would love to play some kind of like Rudy esque undersized underdog athlete, you know? I love sports so much. I mean it would be some kind of a sports movie. Best advice you ever received. Stay ready so you never have to get ready. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. Continue your luck, man. Thank you. Thanks to my guest, Jerry Ferrara, Lone Survivor. We'll be in theaters January 10th, and you can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time.